I'm Jacob. I'm Yuri. And we're going for a drive. We've got the brand new, never been driven, 2018 Hyundai Kona. 1.6 turbo ultimate. In acid yellow, even though it should be called acid green. Hyundai invited us to Vancouver Island, which has been rainy and sunny and rainy and sunny all day. Yeah, and it's super warm here, not in Toronto, so like... Yeah, shout out the West Coast. I understand why people move here, but yo... It's so nice. I like Toronto more. Ooh. Never gonna move here. I kind of want to move here, I just can't afford it. Never. It looks a lot nicer. Back to the car. So admittedly, subcompact crossovers aren't the most exciting cars. Not to us, no. We reviewed the CX-3, the HRV, and the CHR. Yes, we did. And we also drove them today. Those three subcompact crossovers were pretty slow. Yes, the slowest cars we've ever driven in a very long time. But this one is a 1.6 liter turbo. Yes, it is. Very similar to the Kia Soul turbo. Yes, I believe it's the same engine, but it does not have the same horsepower. This has slightly less, but it has all wheel drive. Yes, so it's, it's good speed. This is good, the best car in this segment. So this does have 175 horsepower, which is very appropriate, and 195 pound-feet of torque in the turbo. There is a two-liter naturally aspirated version. Yes, we drove that in the morning. Which is as slow as the rest. Technically, on paper, it has one more horsepower than the CX-3, which is the fastest in the segment other than this one. But in real life, for some reason, Hyundai got an airstrip, so we raced them. Yes, we did. Here's how that went. <laughs> the world's slowest drag race. Oh, here we go. CX-3, no! No, CX-3! No! <laughs> I just lost to the CX-3. I beat the HRV and I beat the CHR. <laughs> World's slowest drag race. The CX-3 was the fastest. Now it's time for the 1.6 turbo Kona. Three, two, one. Oh, dusted! Not even close! Not even close! <laughs> oh yeah, dusted that Mazda CX-3. <laughs> this thing's actually pretty quick. Wow. All right then, there you have it. This is the fastest one available. But fastest I, car in this class. I, I am somewhat jaded that our first time on an airstrip racing cars <laughs> was compact crossovers. Yeah, God. <laughs> Somebody's playing a cruel joke on us. The automotive journalist gods. Yes, but at least it was fun. We did get our first airstrip drag race. The best part was filming the Kona. Yes, and driving the 1.6 turbo. Look how cool these shots look. The biggest thing that we noticed off the line was the CHR because it doesn't have all-wheel drive. It's the slowest. It doesn't do anything off the line. Yeah. So watch our review of those. Click that okay, in the description. Racing these cars doesn't matter. So let's get to the good stuff. The visor test. You may remember we did a watch giveaway. The guy who won it lived in Vancouver. So while we were here, we hand delivered it to him. And, and he did the visor test. Yes, world's first <laughs> Kona visor test. We got Nathan, he just won the watch and he's gonna do the first official visor test on the Hyundai Kona. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Yes! Yeah. Passes. <laughs> Great job, Nathan. It passes, It passes. No well, doubt. Let's, let's do a backup one right here. Three, two, one. Boom. Oh, that feels good. <laughs> but more important than the passing of the visor test, the looks. Okay, weird but cool. I fully agree. I really like how it's like a little slit for the daytime running lights. I did not like it when I saw pictures of it when it first came out, but I seeing it in person, it, it just works for yeah, some yeah. reason. It really works. It's kind of a ripoff of the front end of the Cherokee. Yes, it is, but this one makes it work. It looks good. And the front grille kind of looks like a Cobra. How kind yeah. of comes out like that? I can kind of see that with the slitty eyes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. But did I just say slitty? In the literature for this car, they based it off someone wearing like sports equipment. An exoskeleton. Yes, and you know what this looks like to me? What? Cyrax and Sector from Mortal Kombat 2 and oh. 3. You're right. Maybe just 3. I haven't played that in a very, very long time. I but see I Cyrax see that. and Sector here. Yeah, okay, fair enough. So the slits are up top, those are the running lights. And then below that, you actually have your real headlights. Yes. And then you have your fog lights below that. The part that I really don't like about the looks 
the hood scoop thing, the little slit is fake. It's fake, but it looks cool. It does look cool. But it's fake. Yeah. Find a way to make it real. You know what? Tell me. I think they're saving that for the Kona N. The Conan. <laughs> they're not. Oh my God, Conan. <laughs> uh, okay, and speaking of which, usually on these events, they've got a hashtag for it. <laughs> the best hashtag of all press events, Ice Cream Kona. Hashtag Ice Cream Kona. You did it backwards. Hashtag ice cream Kona. There we go. <laughs> Major points to Hyundai for that. And on the back, we've got tail lights separated from your reverse and signal lights. And on this ultimate model, we have LEDs. Which looks really good. It doesn't look as good without LEDs. The side profile looks all right. There's a lot of plastic cladding. I like how it's like a gray plastic cladding on the upper trim and black on the lower trim. It really makes it stand out. Remember what I said in the BMW X2? Yes. Gray is luxury now. Yes. Gray is, is the upper trims. Okay, so speaking of gray for upper trims, this has gray on just above the rocker panels and on the back bumper where the lower trim does not. And there's actually an optional skirt package for this and the car looks really good with it. And also with the different trim levels. Oh, uh, by the way, there's five of them. Okay, we'll get into that right after. You get a black roof with the middle trims, but you can't get a black roof with the upper trims. But black roofs look it's more sporty. classy. So I think they should put black roofs on the upper trim. Yeah, it needs to be on the ultimate. It's basically on every trim other than the ultimate. I think it's when you don't have a sunroof, it's a black roof. That's what it is. So Hyundai, next time, black roof, every sporty model. Okay, so let's get into the trims. There's five of them. Yeah, they do not have regular names. But they have names that make sense once you look at it. I feel like there's too many trims. There should be two less. So if I remember correctly, we have essential at the bottom. Yes. Luxury at the top. No. Luxury in the middle. Yes and then ultimate at the top. And you're still missing some. Yeah, what's the middle two? Essential, preferred, luxury, trend, ultimate. Somewhat makes sense. It does make sense, it's just still confusing. There should yeah. be three. I wish car companies made it base, top, middle. But anyways, moving on. Yeah. I wanna talk about how it drives. I think the best out of this segment that I've driven. I would agree, hands down. Overall, power, handling, transmission, everything. Suspension, I think this is way better than CX-3, CHR, anything. Okay, so the reasons this is better, dual clutch transmission. Seven speed, shifts very quick, not lightning, None but of that good. CVT nonsense. Yeah, so when you're going up hills in Vancouver, it's not just screaming at you the entire time. But we have been noticing that when you're starting up hills with a dual clutch, you do get that a little bit of rollback. Yeah, but like whatever. And there is a six speed in the two liter and it's also good. It's okay it's not as good as the seven speed dual clutch. I would not even consider anything besides this in this segment. For us, I would agree. Yes, okay. <laughs> Other cool things, multi-link rear suspension in all all-wheel drive models. Exactly, these handle really, really well. So I think the CX-3 handles the best in the segment until I drove this car. I think it handles slightly better and I think the damping on the suspension is way better. It's and softer, it's not as firm for no reason. It still handles well, but yeah. it's not overly firm for no reason like the CX-3. I have noticed that too. Yeah. And this has all wheel drive, but you can get this in front wheel drive in some of the lower trims. Yes, you cannot get the 1.6 turbo with front wheel drive. Okay, but that's that's fine. Do you agree that this is the best in class? Yes, because it reminds me a lot of driving the Kia Soul Turbo, <laughs> which I love. Yeah, okay. I can see that. This is very similar. However, it's not exactly the same. Kia Soul Turbo, no all-wheel drive. That's a big game changer in the segment. Yeah, but faster. Yeah, well, slightly faster. But all-wheel drive, so this may be faster off the line. Do we have to do another drag race for Kia Soul Turbo? Yeah, this? yeah, for sure, for sure. All right, well, stay tuned for that one sometime in the future. <laughs> but you know what else I think makes this better than the competition? What? The lane keep assist. Yes. It works. Fantastic. It's very similar, if not the same, as the Kia Forte 5, which we tested earlier. It's very, very good. It's, it's got very that, trustworthy. Yeah, it got that Genesis y kind of stuff. Yeah. It works really well. There is no adaptive cruise. We have regular cruise, but that's fine. We've got a heads up display. It's the plexiglass type style that the CX3 also has. I don't like it, but it is better than the CX3 one because it's bigger, so I can still actually see stuff in it. Yeah, I like it. It's got a lot of cool displays. And my favorite reason for liking this over everything else in the competition. You guessed it, 10 rewinding satellite radio stations. Yes, it does rewind satellite radio. And on that note, Your I think we should drive? switch. Yes. Box test. No. Nope. We don't know yet. I think it won't do very well. I think it'll do better 
It'll do better than the CX-3, I yeah. think. It's got a lot of room here. It does. And what I prefer about this to all the other cars also is that it's not cramped. No, not at all. I love that the center console is lower than all the other ones yes. in the competition, which is great. All right, let's get into the interior then since we just touched upon it. We should. Standard heated seats on all models. Yeah, which is amazing. The version we're in right now has green piping and green trim everywhere. Which is a $200 option. But you can only get it on the green version. If you get that option on any of the other versions, it's black. That's right. Or I don't even know if it's an option. But in the future, if people like it, it may become an option for like red, blue. I like it. Orange. Speaking of that, we haven't talked about all the cool colors. No, we didn't. So this press event, they got only cool colors, no black, gray, or white. That's right. Big ups. And especially the acid green, which all the journalists were trying to get. Acid yellow. Whatever. But it is acid green. It is green. Back to the interior. It looks really good. However, there is some cheapness over here, but they did a really good attempt at making it not look cheap. And there is soft touch everywhere you need it. The seats are really comfortable. They actually do have a decent amount of side bolstering and the driver's seat has adjustable lumbar, which is very nice. But the lower trims have a hound's tooth. Yeah, cloth. Just like the Kia Soul Turbo had. True. You know what I kind of don't like about the interior? Hit me. <laughs> so uh, my gauges, they have blue lights around them. It was fine in the blue car, but in this one, I want the acid yellow. But like, little nitpick, not the end of the world. We do have auto climate, works really well. The bottom trims do not have auto climate. And uh, for shifting gears, we don't have paddles. We just have the shifter that goes left, up is up, down is down. And the, the Mazda 3, up is down, down is up. Slightly more race car in that aspect. Yeah, except However, for not in speed. <laughs> no. <laughs> we do also have drive modes. So we've got three different drive modes, normal, eco, and sport. A little bit more sensitive on the throttle. Okay, speaking of shifters and drive modes, there's no logo on this shifter. No, there isn't. It's just I, gloss black. I want a logo there. And speaking of gloss black, in this trim, our <sighs> door handles are gloss black. Jacob's favorite. <sighs> All right, Hyundai, do not make the handles gloss black. Anything that you touch, normally should not be gloss black. So you got it right on the lower trims and it's not gloss black, it's a satin silver and it's perfect. So just put that in all the trims. Honestly, I don't mind the piano black. I actually kind of like the piano black. It the looks good. The second you touch it, there's fingerprints all over it. I would actually love a piano black steering wheel. Actually, my God, look at all these fingerprints. It's kind of gross. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> see? <laughs> so you're, like... you're straight up liar is what you're saying. <laughs> Anything to get under your skin, Jacob. <laughs> what I do like though, is that they have wireless charging and no one else in the segment has it. So there you go. I like how they got a second tray for putting your phone. Speaking of phones, one USB port, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Great job. So let's segue that into the infotainment. <laughs> yes, let's hit this up, your favorite. We've got the traditional Hyundai infotainment. It's perfect. It works really well. They've got like different button placement, but it looks cool. But there are hard buttons for pretty much everything and volume and tuning knobs, yeah. it's great. And a custom button. No issues at all. Mazda, you can learn a thing or two from this one. Or three or four. <laughs> <laughs> and Toyota and Honda. Everyone, everyone yeah, learns something actually. from Hyundai and Kia because they're yeah. the best. Sorry for bringing Kia into this, but I mean, you guys use the same thing. <laughs> Random thing as well, since we're talking about this console area, locking differential. A locking differential in a compact crossover. That's pretty crazy. So what that does, you lock your diff and it sends up to 50% of the torque to the back wheels, up to, I believe, 40 kilometers per hour. And we also have hill descent control because every crossover needs that to prove that it's a crossover. That's right. And this has all of the plastic cladding on the outside, so this is super off-roady, on-roady. Okay, but one thing you love about this crossover more than every other crossover. What's that? The rear door handles. Yes, they are normal. <laughs> so they went the Mazda CX-3 route and they put a normal door handle. Thank you. First thing you saw when you looked at it, normal door handle, yeah. normal door None handle. None of this weird side thing, but they put this weird thing at the side that looks like it could have possibly been one at one point, but someone along the line decided to make it a normal one. So yeah. thank you, whoever that was. Infinity sound system. Sounds really good. It's not like the BMW 760Li that we've got coming up for a review <laughs> no. very shortly. In in frozen gray, um, how did Doug know? So I think it's finally time to talk price. $21,000 for the base. Mm, it's not the base, essential. <sighs> essential, anyways. Front wheel drive, two liter, non-turbo. I think that's a really good price for what you get. We are in the top trim, which is the ultimate. the ultimate. And in Canadian, which I forgot to say, but I don't care, because Americans, everything we do is in Canadian. This is $31,000. $999. dollars 
Which is in the ballpark of the CHR, HRV, and the Mazda CX-3. Yes, but you get way more stuff in this, more power, better handling. Rewinding satellite radios. Yeah, this is definitely the top pick in the segment from us, I think. I 100% agree. There you go. Don't forget to subscribe. Notification bell and patreon.com slash the straight pipes. And we promise we'll take a break from crossovers for a bit. <laughs> it's sport car season, baby. Woo, top down Miata. I'm Yuri. I'm Jacob. And we're going for a drive. Break. Don't forget subscribe. to subscribe. Subscribe right now. Subscribe. We didn't even, we didn't do that. Do you think I could check your visors? I would love to see if the visors actually just move. Do they yeah, extend? Yeah. Sweet. Here, <laughs> right, you ready? Yeah. First official plane first visor official test. First official plane visor test. Three, two, one. All right. Does not extend. Damn. But look. Oh my God. <laughs> Thanks, man.